Hi guys, I have decided to redo the video number one and uh, make uh, something uh, more simple and uh, slower so it's easier for understand. So for that I have created three shapes uh, which are a sim single ball, uh, a tube with a thread and uh, a simple box with a thread as well. And I have, um, for that, I have um, applied uh, different materials. I have uh, polished copper for the box. I have plastic, translucent made red for the, the bowl. And then for the, um, the pipe uh, with the thread, I have uh, aluminum bit blasted. So these are standard uh, Fusion 360 materials, not modified in any way. Uh, later on, we're going to see how I have also created a board on which I have applied a um, wood material, which is a 3D wood material that I highly recommend. And I have modified it to turn it around, but I will show you later. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the board. So this is a simple setup and uh, the view is uh, top front corner. I also have uh, recorded that view here and it says top front corner or you can click home it will give you the same view but closer so here we go now we can switch to render and in render let me take uh, change here the environment and go back to my standard environment by default I always choose a cool light and uh, this is where it starts so uh, before I do anything I'm trying to set up for any studio setup like this one cool lights I'm gonna start with 1500 lux and then I'm gonna work my way up if I need that uh, then I'm going to click here on the position marker for the environment which is cool light and I'm gonna start to turn and as you can see here the shadow changes and the way the parts are light up by the environment changes as well so I can leave it here I'm not going to use the ground scale right now I will show it to you later when we use uh, HDRI environment maps so that's it for the position uh, background I'm not touching anything I'm using the environment background uh, for the ground I'm going to use a ground plane I'm going to flatten the ground so uh, the, the, the bottom part actually rests on something physical and I'm going to turn on the reflections as you can see here the reflection is showing up if I want to blur this uh, reflection I'm going up in the roughness as you can see it disappears slightly uh, I'm going to run an in canvas render so you can have a better look so in canvas render Pretty quickly I can say that uh, my lighting is pretty well balanced for now. I can try to amp it up and maybe go to 2000. Yeah, it's a bit too bright. I can go back down to 1750. Yeah, looks better. Uh, maybe I want to have more reflection, a clearer reflection here in this area. Yeah, more reflection looks better. So I'm going to leave it for a little for a few seconds as you can see here it's already 17 seconds so there depending on your configuration from 15 to 30 seconds into the in canvas render you have a pretty good idea about lighting and uh, reflection once I reach that I can stop my in canvas render I'm going down the list for the camera I'm using perspective view uh, the focal length is 104 millimeters why because when you widen the angle you're gonna have a twisted perspective a widened perspective when you reach 50 millimeters which is pretty much uh, they say it's the human eye uh, width of uh, focal length you have a pretty neutral uh, depending on your point of view a pretty neutral uh, viewing angle I like to have to give some perspective I like to use a pretty flat 104 millimeters uh, it already gives me some kind of depth of field without applying any real depth of field on it and give me some blur in the background so if I'm starting to run the canvas as you can see the, my, my shadows are pretty much blurred they are, they are not really popping up and uh, the focus is really on my parts right here in the middle 
so this is why I love to use 100 to 104 millimeters. This is for, I would say, either small objects or small uh, or objects that you want to detach from the background. So 104 is my go-to. For the exposure, I'm uh, always running between 9 and uh, 9.5 and 9.9. Uh, it also depends on your taste and what kind of ambience you want to give to your to your render. But uh, I found out that uh, 9.5 with 104 mm focal length and 750 uh, lux as lighting for any studio type rendering gives pretty good results so far. Uh, now you can also apply, after that down the list, you can also apply a depth of field. What it's going to do actually, I'm going to activate it. I'm uh, going to click on the center of focus and I, uh, with my, my mouse I can come here for example on the ball and it will focus on the ball and it will blur the rest of the image like you would do with any regular camera. It will focus on where you do the autofocus. If it's on, on the ball, the ball is going to be clearer. If it's here on the pipe, I'm going to click on the pipe, the end of the pipe, you're going to see the, the focus is going to be made on that part of the image and now if I want to get closer I'm going to put it here on the corner, top corner of the box okay so you, you can see top corner of the box is pretty clear the, the rest is a little bit blurry as for the blur uh, if you want to keep it realistic I would say by experience you, you can experience in different ways and, and uh, everyone taste is uh, uh, different in, uh, in that matter but between 0 0.250 and uh, 0 0.350 you got pretty realistic uh, focus uh, like you would do with a, a regular camera if you're looking for photorealistic uh, renderings this is uh, by experience where you want to be uh, once it's done I can close it I'm gonna let my in canvas render go for a little longer so I can uh, triple check that uh, everything looks the way I want it to look. Oh, one last thing, uh, for the, the size of the rendered part, as you can see here I have on each side I have a dark bar which is uh, the outer part of, uh, of the image, the, the inner part of the image is that frame, the clear frame. You can change it of course, I've chose 6 point, uh, six, uh, 16 nines widescreen but you can also go 5.4 landscape you can go 4.5 portrait uh, you have many different you, you can accept the viewport which is going to give you a really large image 1.1 uh, one, one square and the last one I think is 4.3 presentation I like to use uh, either the view sport aspect ratio or the widescreen uh, once you got that you can pretty much close this and uh, I'm gonna stop the in-canvas render and uh, launch a render so uh, for the first renders if you don't want to tax your machine too much on um, on resources um, I always start by uh, doing um, a pretty simple web 800 by 600 local render uh, final 75% is enough if you want to have a quick render and then you click render um, for this presentation I have already rendered uh, this image so I'm going to show it to you it's, uh, it's in my folder here quality 5x7 took uh, an hour and uh, 35 minutes to render as you can see uh, both light uh, material uh, quality you don't see any uh, blurred or any noise anymore so it's pretty neat